In this video, we're going to talk about adding a bump feature to an irregular surface in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk about adding bumps or different features to a curved part. Uh, so this is a request, an email that somebody sent me, and uh, the shape that they sent me was something similar to this. I let you use your own design, your own imagination for what you want to do. But I want to talk about ways in which we can add some sort of pattern to a geometric feature, a surface like this. Now, I will say that there is no automatic tool to make this happen. I know on the plastic tools, there is a geometric pattern, and I have covered that before. It doesn't really work in instances like this. Maybe at some point in the future, there will be an option, but right now it doesn't. So what I'm going to do is show you a couple of different ways that we can use things like split faces and curve driven patterns to help create this. So what we're going to do is we're going to be creating a bump on the surface. And this is a surface. You can see that it's hollow. It's something I just made as a form body. Uh, it is a surface because I removed the top, but uh, it doesn't really matter. It can be a solid just as long as you have a curved face to use. The way that we're going to do this is we're going to use planes or sketches to create our intersection curves. I'm not going to go through a full video on doing this. I just want to hit some of the highlights. So the first thing that we want to consider is where we want our pattern. And we're going to be doing a uniform bump pattern. Now, by uniform, I mean a consistent spacing along an edge. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to split the faces up where I want this pattern to be. Now, when this body already got converted, there was a line or division in the surface that actually is pretty good for what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my surfaces and I'm going to create a zero millimeter offset. I do need to turn off chain selection and I just want to offset that back face. So my body's folder, now I have just this back face and I don't want to use it all. I don't want to come down below here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this. And when we trim this, what we can think about is where we want our pattern to be. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a rectangle and then I'm going to select my bottom edge, the origin, and I'm going to make that my midpoint. That way it just stays uh, symmetric left to right. And I'm not going to add any dimensions, but I'm going to go ahead and just trim this. So using that as my trim tool, I'll remove the outside section. I can hide my sketches. And now I've got this small section that is essentially a piece of that original handle. This is where I want to contain my features to. So now that I have this, the next thing that I want to do is begin to split this up so I have some sort of reference curve. Now, there's a couple different ways you could do this. We could create a bunch of sketches and we could sketch the intersection curves. We could project them to the surface. If you want to use a sort of non-uniform pattern, that's what you might do. We're going to take a look at just a couple of different ways to do this. The first and the easiest way is to use planes and to use the split face option. So we're going to split this surface the splitting tool is going to just be the mid plane here. And then we're going to say, OK, so it's still one surface, but now we have this edge that we can use. The other way, as I mentioned, is to go ahead and use a sketch for that. What I want to do is bring back the original body. I'm going to do it on the side just so we can see how this looks. So from the sketch, I am just going to use a spline and I'm just going to come through here and just create some sort of pattern, go around. And what we can do is we can take that and we can use that to split this face. So I'm going to do it on one side, split that face. I'm going to use this as my split tool. And you can see that it goes out and it splits that face that I selected. The other option we have is to create a new sketch. And we have a create project include and project to surface option. So in this case, I'm going to project to that face. I'm going to use this curve. Notice that it's a little bit different. Now, the reason it's different is because by default, it's using closest point. But what we want to do is along vector. And then we're going to select the Y axis in this case. And you can see it's something very similar. Now, the main difference between these two methods is one method actually splits the face up. So we have an edge here. The other method is just a sketch. So if I hide the body, the sketch is still there. You can see that it's just sort of hanging out in space. It is 3D, it's not flat. So uh, these are just kind of two different methods. 
depending on your geometry, what you want to do, if you don't want to split the face of a surface or you don't want to copy a surface, you might want to use the projected curve or the projected sketch option. So now that we have these, let's go ahead and talk about the basic geometric pattern. So you have to decide what you want to pattern. And if you're trying to make bumps on a design, the easiest thing for us to do is to create a sphere primitive. And the sphere primitive needs to be done by simply sketching a sphere. So I'm just going to go ahead and create something. Let's go ahead and hide these surfaces here. Make it a bit smaller. Uh, let's try two millimeters. We'll bring back our surface. Let's probably make it three millimeters. That'll be okay. So now we have this sphere, this body that's created, but it's not really in the correct position. If I just go to create pattern and I do pattern on path, if I select this body and then I select my path and we start to increment this, you can see that it's using this seed location, the original location of that object, and it's not moving it to the new location. So what this means is that we really need that sphere to be positioned in the right spot. We can use things like move. We can select point to point, select our sphere, and select a point we want it to go to. So the body is going to be that. The origin point will be the sphere itself, and the target point will be something up here. And it'll just move it to that location. Now, remember the original body is a bit bigger than that. This section here is only for our pattern. So now that we have the surface and we've got that body in place, now we can go in and do our pattern on path. So the body is again going to be that sphere. The path is going to be our curve here. We can drag this down. We want to go the entire extent of the, the curve here. You can see that we can go past, but it will snap to the end. And then we can just increment the number of instances of the sphere that we want on. In this case, I'm going to go to 10 and I'm going to say OK. Now, if this was a solid, we could just combine them and then we've got the perfect geometry here. Now, what happens if you want this pattern to go sort of left and right? Well, we can take this same approach, pattern on path. We can select all the bodies that we want to pattern. And then we can simply use a different curve selection. So in this case, I could select the top. I could begin pulling them out. And you can see that those do work out relatively well. We can do this symmetric so that it does go on both sides. We can increment this to five so that we've got two on either side. And that gives us essentially what we're looking for. Now, we do need to keep in mind that this really works well if this shape was, let's say, a sweep along a path. Because we have a somewhat organic shape, then that doesn't always work. So what you might end up having to do is you might need to create a split face or a curve that goes in the other direction at different points in your design in order to replicate that. So now that we've seen that basic approach, I mean, that's generally all we need to know, but let's go ahead and let's just apply it to here and see what happens. So I am going to create another primitive sphere and I'll just pick a point here. Again, we'll use that same size reference. Again, we're going to use move this body and then we're going to go point to point. So we'll select that. And then you can see that we don't really have a point on our curve. So it does get a little bit more complicated. If we were using a sketch that had a start and an end point, it would be fine. I'm going to say OK. And then I'm going to manually move this. So I'm going to use the free move type. And I'm just going to try to put it in roughly the right location. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. So again, with the right references, this definitely works a bit easier. So now we're going to go to create pattern, pattern on path. This is the body and this is the path. And you'll notice that it's not letting me, um, it's not letting me really dictate the start and end point because it's a continuous curve, but we can still use it and we can increment this. And as we increment this, I'm just gonna kick it up to, let's say 20. Yeah, it looks okay. It's probably hard to see on the video, but there is a preview here. I really wish that those were darker and easier to see because the default material is just steel gray, so you can't really see them. But you can see that we were able to pattern those around. Now, from this point, you can obviously see that it does take a good bit of work to get something like this to, 
to happen in your design. And if your design is a lot of complex curvature, if this back wasn't somewhat uniform, it didn't behave like a sweep, then obviously that might be a bit more difficult. Um, but again, in this case, the best thing that we can do is just turn this entire thing into a solid. So I'm gonna stitch these together. This is gonna give me a solid body. This is still just the little extra piece on the back. And then all we need to do is combine all these solid bodies together. So I'm gonna select every little sphere and we'll just put them all together. So now we've got one solid body that has all these little bumps on it. And if we hide the edges, you can see that it's sort of giving that, that behavior. Now, obviously we could have gone larger spheres, sunken them further in. We could have used this uh, more as a negative. So for example, if we do Control Z and undo, I'm gonna to go to combine. We're gonna do a cut and the target body is gonna be the main body and as we look through here, the main body is number 73. The cuts are going to be all of these other bodies. We'll say OK. And now we took that exact same thing and we just made a, basically a bunch of uh, dimples on the back rather than the bumps coming out. So again, the process can be used for any different design. The more complex your design is, the harder it's going to be to set up those reference curves. Hopefully one day that geometric pattern will be able to handle something like this pretty easily. Right now it still isn't quite there. It works well on cylindrical and circular faces, but it doesn't really work on these complex shapes. So one day it'll be there, but right now we have to sort of do this, this method of kind of faking it, you know, creating our own curves and our own patterns. If you have something that is a little bit more uniform, you can also get away with doing something like a circular pattern or a rectangular pattern, but the pattern on path is generally what's going to end up giving you the best results for these complex shapes. If you have any questions, then obviously please let me know. You can always send me an email, support at caducator.com. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.